Okay, today we're going to fly to McMinnville, Oregon and do the runway 22 ILS. So the first thing we want to do, we're using our Avidine. So notice on the EFA screen we're on GNAV1. GNAV1 is the Avidine. GNAV2 is my Garmin 650. We're going to use the Avidine for this. So the first thing we want to do is bring up the FMS. I'm going to hit FMS. I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm going to type KMMV. So now we're going to McMinnville. The next thing I'm going to do is up, bring up Procedure. So I hit the Procedure button on the Avidine. I select ILS 22, enter, and then it's asking for our initial approach fix. We could use vectors um, or pick one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select Rower, enter. This is the flight plan all in order. So I'm now going to hit, I move the cursor to Rower and I'm gonna hit direct, enter, Rower. So now if we zoom out on our map, You're going to see it's going to go to Rower. Rower is right in the Aurora airspace. Okay, so we've programmed the Avidine. There's multiple pages. There's the map, so you can see the same thing. I'm going to leave it on FMS, though, so we can watch what it's doing. Um, if we hit the flight plan button over here on the EFIS, you can see Rower, Osier, uh, all the flight plans. You can use two fingers or just hit back. Notice we're on COM, we're transmitting on COM1, listening on COM1. So we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and monitor COM2 at the same time, which is Portland Approach. Deets Airport traffic, RV402, Romeo Hotel, departing 34, Deets Airport with the right turnout. Okay, now that we're airborne, first thing I'm going to do before we do any power, I'm going to hold the track button down to sync the bug, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the autopilot. autopilot. Notice it's in track mode and altitude mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and put us, have us climb to 2900 as we turn right. Okay, we're going to pull off some power now. And then we're going to slow the prop down. Next thing we're going to do is going to switch the radio to Aurora. Notice how I did it on here. I'm going to show you how to do it a different way. We're still on Aurora. If I touch comm frequency, we're on OR40, our departure. If I turn to the right, it's our destination. And then this way it sorts it by nearest airports. I'm going to hit tower. Notice that it moves it to standby, and then I'm going to hit transfer. Now we're on 2035. Notice it actually moved it on the Avidine to 12035. Okay, I'm now going to... Aurora Tower, RV402, Romeo Hotel, just departed Dietz Air Park with request. 7027 Hotel, 402 Romeo Hotel, RB10. We want to just transition your airspace to the airspace west. Ahead. RB2 Romeo Hotel, transition approved. We're up 73036. 3036 approved to Romeo Hotel. So we're going to go 3036. Hotel, remain at or above 1,700. Correction, remain uh, level at 2,000 until further advice. 2,000 until further to Romeo Hotel. Now we're still flying the heading bug. I'm going to bring up the autopilot. Is still one mile ahead and to your right, uh, westbound altitude indicates 700. I'm going to switch to nav, and notice where V nav is armed. That way, when we get a glide slope, it'll follow it. We're able to send the pattern out to 1,200. So we're headed to Rower. You can see on there. Notice on here, it's 2.3 miles, 55 seconds, and that's on every screen. Tango Tango, seven miles from Lyons, turn left heading 250. Maintain 3000 until South Channel Lift Flies are clear. Eyelash runway 22 approach. Turning left heading 250, 103 Tango Tango, and maintain 3000 still established on the ILS 22 McMinnville. Okay, as long as we're here, we can go ahead and bring up the approach plate. So I hit the hammer drag on okay, McMinnville approach plate. I'm going to scroll down runway 22, select. Now, pan and zoom, now it knows. Okay, 
noticed it has automatically loaded the ILS frequency into the standby or into the nav side of the Avidyne, and it has not been Hotel altitude restriction canceled. Traffic one mile behind and to your right, same direction. Hotel, helicopter altitude indicates 800. Uh, cancel rest altitude restriction. We'll look for the helicopter to Romeo. Okay, so the ILS is loaded, the frequency is loaded. What it's doing is it's waiting to actually decode the Morse code from the frequency, and then it'll tell it to you. Central aircraft runway 35 and use information, whiskey current altimeter 3036. So let's go ahead and bring back up our approach plate. Technically we should be at 2900, but we're picking up some rain. So I'm going to stay here. Tuck and toe over ground, hold position. I'm going to slow down a bit. So let's go ahead and bring up our, notice here it shows you Osier 2900, Unic should be 2500. It'll also put it on the map if we go to the map page, it'll show you on there. Planes tuck and toe, proceed to squip the alpha. Should be at 2,900. I'm going to go ahead and climb up a bit. In arm. Notice we're still in GPS on the autopilot, still following the GPS. Okay, so if I bring up the comm radio, I'm going to go to the right, McMinnville, CTAF. RV2, Romeo Hotel, have a good flight track. Thanks for the help, to Romeo Hotel. Okay, we're going to switch frequencies. We've already tuned it from the EFIS. So we're headed for 2,900 feet, or 25. Okay, it's going to make the turn. Notice it's decoded McMinnville, so it's listened to the Morse code, it's decoded the ILS. So now it's checked it. So we're still in GPS, following its magenta, the needle, the CDIs and needle. Notice this says GPS to V-lock. It's going to switch automatically. Okay, UNIC wants 2,500 feet, so we're right on altitude right now. There. Notice it switched over automatically, that we've got the needle, we've got the vertical, now it's going to intercept. Notice vertical is still in arm. It's just flying into the, it'll fly into the glide slope and then it'll capture it and start down. So with this is where I normally slow down. Ideally, I like to fly this at about 100 knots. Under 110, maybe this far out. Notice the needle's coming down. Okay. Intercept, begin descent. Five mile final. And McMinnville traffic, RV402 Romeo Hotels on a five mile final runway 22 McMinnville.
Okay, we're coupled, we're right on the glide slope. Notice it turned green, that's because it's a nav radio, the glide slope's green, and the localizer side lateral's green. Okay, the next thing we should do is look at our approach plate. Oh, we should have done this before. Um, 361 is our decision height, so let's go back and set minimums 361. Check. Okay, so now we've got our minimum set. Notice how it adds up all the legs. We're 2.4 miles. And McMinnville traffic, RV2 runway tail, 2.4 mile final, runway 22 McMinnville. McMinnville traffic, heavy helicopter 168 Charlie Hotels on short final, runway 22, we'll have a momentary delay on the runway. Were you uh, coming in the last, sir? Uh, we're low approach only for the RV behind you, and we've got Sean ADSB. Thank you. 110 knots, seems pretty good here. You can see the runway ahead of us here. 500. That's a 500 foot call out. That's actually coming from the Avidyne. The other thing we could do is if, since this is an Avidyne 550, you can actually see the glide slope needles on here at the same time. So notice it just turned to orange. That is our warning we're about to minimums. So it will not fly below that. It's gonna level off. In the helicopter, are you going to go mist or are you on the ground? Full wheels down at this time. Here we'll hold for you. You're going to fly directly over the runway. Okay, we'll fly over the top of you. Thanks for the help, Torm Tail. No problem. Okay, so it's leveled off at minimums here. It's orange. I'm well, Portland, November 103, Tango Tango. We've got this six minutes. 103, Tango Tango, final approach. I didn't say your altitude. Portland altimeter 3037. Minimum. Okay, now one nice thing about the Avidyne is it automatically um, suspends and flies the mist. So here it is drawing on the mist. I'm going to go ahead and put on a flight director. Notice it switched back to GPS. Flight director is magenta and it's flying to the altitude bug. So it's going to automatically fly the mist. And if we bring the map up, you can actually see it on here. We haven't had to do anything. 